Hey everybody, thanks for watching the videos. Thank you for everything that you guys have done, uh, all the kind words on Facebook and Messenger and, and all the cards and uh, you know all the kind words and wishes uh, as well as all the donations that you guys have made for Jennifer. Um, it, it's really helping, it really is. Um, this I think is going to be my fourth update. We are now, uh, this is November 2nd. Um, we're six weeks into from this accident and uh, I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit more what's going on. Um, a couple of days ago Jennifer was transferred from UC Davis uh, Medical Center in Sacramento to uh, an, an acute uh, care facility um, just for the rehab of being able to get her off of the um, the tray can be able to breathe again all on her own and hopefully to be able to get that sealed up um, and then hopefully at that point they will be able to start um, with some rehabilitation she she is her eyes are open uh, sometimes she will track when she's um, you know when she's not as tired a uh, lot of healing going on they've been able to repair her hand on her arm, but she hasn't really moved it a lot because that's the weak side. Um, <clears throat> but uh, there, are, there is some. Uh, I people ask me all the time how she's doing, and I, and I want to be negative about it at all because I feel like my words I use is that she's it, it's they're baby steps. You know, they're just a little bit at a time. We are seeing that little bit of improvement every day. Maybe her eyes are just a little bit clearer. She's maybe doing a little bit something, you know, that she wasn't doing before. Uh, this hand is very, very movable, and so is her left leg. So, um, you know, she does a lot of like lifting her hand up and, you know, like scratching her face or her nose, things like that. And she is on a regular sleep cycle per se. She, she's a, pretty much awake throughout the day, and then she is um, she sleeps at night most of the time. Um, they've managed to get her um, get her pretty well stable as far as her um, her physical stuff. Right? Um, we're being told that uh, we're probably about three more months at least before they're going to be able to put her, her uh, skull cap back on. Um, but in the meantime, she has a helmet, so she can wear the helmet when they're going to be doing some um, uh, physical therapy. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, there's been, there's a lot of a lot of information that got lost between one hospital and another and so we've been dealing with that the last couple of days. Um, I had every intention of finally going back to work um, this week and it's been one phone call, one meeting after another, just constantly. Um, they were, uh, they didn't do a few things that they should have done and I, I won't go into all that and I want to be on the negative side but we've had to get that stuff straightened out and so it's just been, it's been a, it's been a fight to get everything going and then she's got this facility she's going to be at and then we're probably going to be at this, once they get her off of the trach then she'll be having to be moved to another location to be able to start working with uh, the neurology part of her. And I honestly think that once that comes back to life, um, that she's going to start to make you know some major improvements. But until then, um, I will tell you this: uh, th this hadn't been conveyed to me before, but uh, I think I had told you that there's a spot in the brain that connects the two areas of the two hemispheres. Um, I didn't know that it's like, okay, well, it's just a connection, but the doctor explained it to me yesterday. There's actually 12 separate nerves that actually are there, and they are completely flooded with blood. It, it, it was, they were bleeding, they are still bleeding a little bit, and um, the doctor tells me that this is a good thing. 
if they had stopped bleeding and started to cl to um, blood clot, then she probably would would probably not recover, and she probably would be paralyzed. He said, right now, what he's seeing, he's seeing things coming and going and coming back and going. And so, with that being said, he said that's all good, right? He said that basically the blood is the body is absorbing the blood, and then it's allowing these new these nerves to start to fire again. And so she's just got to go through this stage of this healing before she's really going to get, you know, aware again and that her brain is fully functional. I mean, like, like I said, it's, she's, the best description I've got right now is that she's pretty much like a baby. She's very much like an infant. Um, but she has the, you can tell that she recognizes people. Um, and that type of stuff. So she's like a baby that has all the information inside and she just can't get it out right now. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you guys this. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for all the kind words um, and the prayers and the phone calls and, and everything else that has that you guys have done. Uh, it's just been unbelievable. Um, and so I, I want to th say thanks. Now, as you know, as you can probably tell, as I tell you these things, is that this is a road that we've never had to travel, right? We've never had this type of stuff go wrong, and so we're having to, like, we have to reach out to here to find out if we can get her into the next hospital. We have to do this, we have to do this. And there's no road, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to how they do it. If I didn't have some friends that have already had these issues before and lead me down the right path, most of these hospitals don't even know that the other hospitals exist. And I find that really, really hard to believe that they don't. Um, and so I, I don't know, I can't, I'm not going to make any promises to this, but my intention is, and I've talked to some people about doing this, is that I'm going to try in Jennifer's honor, her name, a couple different things. One, this, well, I'll talk about that in a second, but we're going to try to build a foundation with her name. That we're going to take the information that we know and we're going to be able to try to apply it so when other people just like what happened to Jennifer happens, that these families will have some sort of resource. Because right now they don't. You know, you've got these, you know, and it sounds really great, but you know, the hospitals, they have the parent, the, the patient advocate, and they've got the social worker and all that, and, and they say, if there's anything you can, we can do, we'll help you. That has not been the case. It hasn't been able to help us at all. When we ask questions about certain things, they don't know. These long-term uh, nurses that are involved in the uh, the discharge from one hospital to another, they're not all brought up to know exactly what's going on either and they don't know about all the different hospitals in the area. They don't know who can do what, what'll do what, what insurance company, and yes, believe me, it all boils down to insurance. So, um, we are going to try to build a foundation, we're going to try to build a nonprofit organization that will help benefit people to be able to be a resource for you to know where to go, what next your next step is. We don't, we don't know and we are learning bit by bit by bit and we're logging everything and we're documenting everything and we're taking phone numbers and we're doing everything that we can do because quite frankly I'm hoping that Jennifer fully recovers but you know she's got a long road and maybe what this could do is that this could be something that maybe when she gets back that she could actually head this thing up and, and lead it up and, and I pray that that really can happen um, but I'm looking into it so those of you that have done nonprofits um, that you know has set up a foundation or whatever and you guys have any information I, again I'm all ears because all of you that have told me about how to contact um, uh, Caltrans and all that type of stuff, I'm doing that. I'm trying to get a hold of these people. 
Um, and this is where it kind of rolls into our next one. We are doing, and I'm not we, but I was the president of the Just for Corvettes Club in Sacramento, California, up until this happened. And then I stepped down, Jennifer and I stepped down, and the, the club has taken off and have ran with it. And I, and I thank them so much, I really do. Um, and they have gotten, they, they put together a fundraiser for this, the November 5th, this coming Saturday, uh, at Rock and Brews in Sacramento. It's over by Cal Expo. And the owner, um, Joe, over there, he called me and he told me, he's like, you know, we're going to try to do everything that we possibly can do to raise as much money possible. And um, he's got some pretty good friends in some pretty high places. And I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. And, and you know, I thanked him for everything he's doing, but I did, he says, is there anything else I can do for you? And I said, yeah, is there any way that you could make phone calls or write a letter or get me in touch with the people that might be able to make the difference as far as the, the roads out here with these intersections? And he says, you know, I think I just might be able to do that. So I'm supposed to meet with him Saturday before the show and then hopefully some of those people are supposed to be at the show. He's personally inviting them to come. So um, I'm gonna get a chance hopefully to be able to get these intersections on the radar for Caltrans. Yeah, I'm maybe cheating the red tape a little bit. I may have a lot of red tape, but I'm gonna do whatever I can. So, um, you know, I just, you know, hopefully this happens. Uh, again, no promises. I just know I'm determined enough. That I just, uh, I'm going to try as hard as I can. So anyway, um, if you guys don't have anything else to do this, this Saturday and you, uh, you live in the Sacramento area at all, that you're drivable, we'd love to have you, uh, have you come. I'll put that information uh, in the description. I'll put a picture of a flyer up here, one of the sides here. Um, and get you that information. I believe it is from 11 to 3 um, is the actual show. I know people are planning on coming earlier um, and of course they've got obviously they've got food there, they've got batting cages, they've got all the different stuff there for the kids too. So, But if you want to bring your Corvette uh, you can, that's great. Um, you know, but this is not just a Corvette show. This is open for every type of car and um, it, it would really, really mean a lot that you know you guys just fill this place to capacity. That would be awesome. So anyway, uh, guys, I've probably talked my ear off already, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna put that information up here on the screen. I hope to see you guys there. If you guys do come, please, uh, we'll be walking around. Jennifer and I'll be walking around. Just you know, stop by, say hi. I, I would love to meet you. Um, like I said, the, the outpour that we've had from everywhere, all the different people that have done this, that have been supportive, I, I would love to be able to shake your hand and thank you so much. So if you guys aren't doing anything on Saturday, please come down and um, I, that, that's about it. So anyway, um, until, uh, again, we'll try to post some stuff on Facebook to kind of let you know what's going on. And I will eventually probably do another one of these videos again uh, as soon as we have something that has changed. Um, I mean, trust me, if I have to, when she finally comes around and I walk in the door and she says, Hey, Dad, how are you? I'll, you know, <laughs> I won't wait to film it like this. I'll just go live on YouTube, okay? So, sorry. So, oh. Anyway, um, if you guys if you guys haven't already uh, donated to her GoFundMe, I would appreciate that. I really would. It'll it'll definitely help her. Okay. So anyway, guys, thanks again, and I'll talk to you later. Okay.